As scuba divers, we all aspire to being able to maximize our bottom time, which means we also want to learn how to be able to go deeper, longer. But for many new divers, this doesn't seem possible. Hi, I'm Gary, one of the instructors here at Deeper Diving, and today I'm going to give you five of my top tips on how you, as a new diver, can dive deeper, longer. <laughs> For many new divers, they're gonna feel as though their air consumption is heavy and it's their limiting factor when they're getting out with other divers. They're looking around at the other people when they hit half tank and going, oh, crikey, I'm the first one, oh no. In heavy air consumption as a new diver is fairly normal, it's fairly typical. But first, as a relatively new diver, the first thing we need to talk about is why it's normal. As a new diver, you're still learning your skills, you're still developing your muscle memory and moving in the water is still a challenge. You're task loading, there's lots of things for you to be thinking about. Uh, not only just breathing, but momentum and movement and buoyancy and where you're going. You're focusing on a completely new environment. You're exercising too, all of which increases your metabolic rate, all of which increases your heart rate, and means that you are going to consume more air. Add to this your lack of familiarity with the dive sites and locations and where you're going, and you're gonna get a degree of range anxiety, that whole, am I going to have enough air to get me back to the start? So what can we do right now to improve your air consumption over the next five dives? Well, I've got five top tips. So many new divers will burn through 20, 25% of their air in the first few minutes of their dive. Why is this? They're feeling pressured, they're feeling rushed, and they get into the water already breathing hard. So what can we do to fix this? So my first top tip is to get ready early. Be first, not last. Start preparing and getting into your equipment and do all your pre-dive safety checks. Then with your mask and your fins already on, sit down and think about the moment. Be in the moment, not in the future, not in the past. Take everything else out of your mind and just visualize the dive that you're going to go on to. Close your eyes for a moment and focus on your breathing. Feel yourself breathing in and out in nice deep breaths, in a nice relaxed manner. Focus on the air as it moves into your lungs. Hold it, savor it, and exhale slowly and fully all the way. These visualizing techniques can help you to savor the moment and think about uh, energizing your entire being, but more importantly, they will help you to slow down and to calm down. And then at the moment that you're ready to get up, get up, move, and enter the water. But entering the water in a relaxed manner will mean that your breathing rate will be more balanced at the point that you start your dive. Tip number two. So many new divers learn overweighted and we dive overweighted when we first start. There's a couple of reasons why this is. It makes our job easier. It makes it easier for us to manage and control you when you're learning to dive that we put a few extra pounds on you. It stops the risk of an uncontrolled ascent. But it means that you have to unlearn that. You have to learn how to dive properly weighted or at least with slightly less weight than you've got before. So how can we do this? For many divers, they feel as though they haven't got enough uh, weight on them to, to get away from the surface and therefore they need that weight. They can't drop that weight. But if you're one of those divers that when you get to the bottom, you have to power inflate your BCD just to get neutrally buoyant, then you are carrying too much weight. So how do we get away from the surface? Well, the first reaction of a new diver to let's go down They'll put their regulator in, they'll be ready, they'll start deflating the BCD, and the very first thing they do is go <gasps> and breathe off the top of their lungs. That means we're carrying about four liters of air that we don't need to be carrying, which means that, that we've got to carry four kilograms of weight to offset all that air that we've just breathed in. So what I'm gonna suggest is the technique to be able to descend and the, the technique to be able to drop weight is that at that point that you're letting air out of your BCD, exhale fully all the way out and at that point you're going to be able to descend below the waves get down to two or three meters below the surface before you breathe in and you'll continue to descend as you go down and that will allow you to drop a little bit of weight 
So the benefits of dropping a little bit of weight is that you're not power inflating your BCD to start the dive. When you get down to the bottom and you're, you're at the appropriate depth, you don't need to add so much air into your BCD to counter the weight, which means that's air you can breathe. You haven't just inflated a BCD and, and that's it. You can now breathe that air, which means you're going to improve your air consumption because you've got, got more air to breathe. But you're also carrying around less weight, which means you're going to use less energy as you move through the water. It's a good idea to look at your finning techniques. Now, the idea being when we're in the water, if we want to conserve energy, if we want to conserve our, our resources, then we want to be as efficient as possible. So our finning technique becomes important as well as our trim and position in the water. So if we are perfectly horizontal in the water and we have a nice flat gait with a, a, a regular, steady, but powerful finning technique, then we can kick and glide through the water very efficiently. And our air consumption will drop by virtue of that efficiency that we've got. Our hip bones, however, are the heaviest bones in our body and we attach most of our lead weight to help us descend around that same hip bone. And so for new divers, it's not uncommon to see us looking like a seahorse in the water. And as a result of being at an angle, as we're finning, the finning power will be trying to push us up in the water column and we'll be constantly trying to push ourselves down or being overweighted to stop and counteract that. But what it means is that our propulsion isn't forward. It's at a 45 degree angle maybe, which clearly isn't effective. If we think about sports cars and how curvy they are and how efficient they are at getting through uh, the air, compare that to an SUV or a truck, that truck just has power but we all know that it burns so much more fuel because it isn't efficient at getting through the air. So practice trimming your weights. Spend a dive moving the weights around on your, on your BCD or around your body and try to get them up as high as possible, up to the shoulders area, um, which means you're more likely to be trimmed in the water. As you're trim and horizontal, your finning technique can adapt and become a lot more efficient. Practicing buoyancy control techniques. Now these things are what you've learned during your open water session, but for many divers, they never focus on buoyancy control again. And I'll always recommend that somebody does a perfect buoyancy or a peak performance buoyancy course or, or adventure dive, just purely because you're gonna learn a whole lot of games and a whole lot of techniques that focus on just moving around without using your BCD, changing your elevation using airway control, using the size and the power of your lungs to be able to lift yourself up or drop yourself down. So I'll focus on playing some games. We might be knocking over weights with your regulator. We might be doing the Mission Impossible hover, getting as close to the ground as possible and then raising yourself up as though you're on a wire. We'll also throw underwater toys like a torpedo um, and just using airway control to help yourself go up and down to grab that torpedo and not let it hit the ground. All of these games that we can play on a single dive mean that you can start to accelerate your buoyancy control far more than you would do just on your open water course. But it's also a good idea when you are diving, when you're starting your dive or when you're finishing your dive, to start to play those games yourself, to start to focus on your airway control and on your buoyancy control. And the final one is breathe more slowly. Now I know when I first learned to dive all those years ago, I was very heavy on air and if I managed to get 25 minutes out of a tank, I thought I'd done well. The instructor I had, a Finnish lady called Susanna, I asked her how come she was able to finish with uh, so much more air than I was and her response was, breathe less. Which kind of didn't help me too much, but she explained it slightly more, which is that as a typical Brit, I gulped air like it was a cheap beer. And what I needed to think about was more of as a fine wine where I would sip and savor it. What does that mean? It means that I slow my breathing down and want to enjoy the breath. So my inhale, maybe two or three seconds to inhale. I'll savor it for a moment or two. Again, another two or three seconds. And then exhale, four or five seconds to exhale. So it means each breathing cycle is perhaps 10 seconds long. By slowing my breathing down and taking deep, full breaths through the full range, I'm exhaling all that carbon dioxide, which means that I'm not feeling the trigger 
to breathe heavily or breathe fast. Practice that on your next dive, just slowing your breathing rate down and thinking deliberately about how you're breathing. Watch and listen for other divers who are around you and hear the rate at which they're breathing and see how yours compares. Well, these are my five top tips that you can start to use now to help you with your airway control, to help you with your air consumption and allow you, hopefully, to start being able to dive a little bit deeper, a little bit longer. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you splash down on the like button, feed any comments back to me and let me know what you think, what's been your top tip on how you've improved your air consumption as you've been diving. Please feel free to subscribe to our channel if you want to see more information or more videos and more stuff about deeper diving and what we're doing here. But most importantly, stay diving, stay frosty. Have a good day.